Welcome back, I am John P. Today we are going to be talking about Tudor and Rolex. Yes, I know I've been talking about Tudor and Rolex a lot recently, but the reality is not only do so many people want to talk and hear about this, it's also that Tudor and Rolex have really been taking over the watch collecting community and watches in general really by storm. Now, there are so many other great and interesting brands and I also do talk about them on this channel, but recently Rolex and Tudor have kind of been doing things that at least in my head, in my opinion, are just interesting to think about because I think what Tudor and Rolex do oftentimes translates to other brands and they really set not only the tone and the stage for the types of colors, but also the types of watches and strategies that others kind of have historically followed along, right? Think of all the dive watches that are out there that look like a Submariner. Think of all the chronographs that look like the Daytona. Think of certain functionality. Let's not even talk about the colorways of the dials of the Oyster Perpetuals that Omega has kind of jumped on board with as so many other brands. Rolex and, T and now seemingly Tudor, they lead the way. They lead the charge for watch collecting and I, I think it's super interesting and so today, I wanna talk about how Tudor is going to be used by Rolex to prop up the secondary market. Before we do that, on the wrist, Enacar Sherpa Dive. Very cool vintage watch I haven't worn enough. I am today, you can see more about this as well as me on my Instagram, The Real John P. And please do not forget to check out DelrayWatch.com where we have so many cool, interesting watches, especially outside of Rolex, which is uh, really what we like to focus on, deliver a lot of cool, interesting watches for you to check out DelrayWatch.com. So how is Tudor propping up the prices of Rolex watches in the secondhand market? First, I think it's important that we touch on why does this matter? There are a lot of people in the comments below, I go through most of the comments, especially after releasing the videos, and a lot of people, it seems, think that uh, you know if times get a little bit tough in terms of the economy a little bit worse than they even are, there will be a drop in the secondhand market for Rolex prices. Now, I think this can easily happen, right? It's a bit of a supply and demand, as well as there's a lot of dealers holding this inventory that will have to free up funds at certain points to make ends meet or to pay for their team or their staff or just expenses or living, right? There's a lot of funding tied up in Rolex and Rolex sports watches from a lot of dealers, and they'd have to let that go to free up funds, likely if things got difficult. But, in terms of the customer perspective, the watch buyer perspective, let's say you walk into a store, even if you're shopping online and you say, hey, I really like the look of the, let's say for example, a new watch. This is a perfect example. The Rolex GMT Master Rupee, or we'll say the, the latest version, the two-tone. And you see it, you like it, you love the style, and you look at it. Now, are you gonna buy it new? No, you can't because they're not in the store, but maybe you'll pay a premium for it to get it uh, out there in the market. Or maybe you'll see what Tudor just released now, a, a root beer watch, right? A root beer GMT functionality, black base, stainless, and gold, essentially the Rolex GMT Master root beer. Now, they're not the exact same watch, but close enough to where someone that was in the market for that style of root beer watch would likely opt in for it if it was in their price range. Now, let's say that the market did get worse, right? Like we're talking about where, you know, pre-owned Rolex prices were selling under, under retail, right? If all, the alternative, a brand that is kind of considered or at least sold by some retailers and sales associates in the boutiques as, you know, Rolex Junior or Rolex at a lower price point, that's what it is considered a lot of the time, whether or not it's always the case, that's what it's kind of considered and it has been in the past. Are you going to buy a watch at a retail price of 5,000 or maybe will you spring for the Rolex for a thousand more, right? To have that kind of disparity, a very small difference in pricing, it wouldn't really make a lot of sense, right? To see a, a, the, the Rolex watch that's supposed to be the ultra desirable, super difficult to obtain and get and put in your collection. It wouldn't make sense to see a pre-owned watch of that, whether it's pre-owned or not, it doesn't really matter. I think it's just a perception type of a thought. It wouldn't make sense to see it so closely priced to uh, the Tudor watch. And so it, it becomes a difficult kind of uh, conversation for the collector. Now it makes a lot more sense, I think, at least in my head, to see you know the $5,000 Tudor Black Bay GMT with the root beer um, 
at a much lower price than the GMT Master. So I think in a way that it does kind of prop up not only the Rolex market, but the pre-owned Rolex market to kind of give a bit of a floor. Now, I don't know where that floor is going to be going into the future. It's not today, right? Because Rolex watches are selling over retail. But I think it's interesting in a way that it does protect the Rolex branding in a way where they sell the alternative to their product, right? When we talk about product alternatives out there in the market, that has a lot to do with pricing and the competitive nature behind the products. But if Rolex is creating the same designs essentially, and they can because Tudor and Rolex are you know, uh, you know, sister brands in a way, they can create almost identical branding without fear of legal issues or any kind of uh, IP problems there. So they can do that and they create the alternative. And so if they create the alternative, they the, the pricing, they can kind of control both ends of it. Now, if other people start you know, directly copying this, that would be an entirely different scenario, which they can protect themselves in other ways. And Rolex has been uh, extremely litigious with that in the past. And so you also see this with Tudor's Black Bay Pro, right? You see that Explorer style where they're offering an alternative to the Explorer. And of course they have an alternative to the Datejust and they have an alternative to the Submariner where they have the Black Bay 58. Now I'm not saying these are exact copies, but in terms of the pricing, I believe that it creates a bit of a floor to prop up the Rolex prices to keep them from potentially dropping too low into the future or potentially dropping at all, right? Because we don't really know what the difference or what the premium a customer would pay over the tutor for the Rolex. It's difficult to calculate that, but I'm sure with all the people on the team at Rolex, I'm sure that they do calculate this, right? They have all the data, they know the sales numbers, I'm sure they do the polling, they do the market research, come up with that mix, and that's how they determine that. So I think it's absolutely brilliant for Rolex and Tudor to be doing this. It's really gonna protect them as a brand. Unfortunately, I think it is probably going to limit the amount of deals that uh, the watch collectors that want to gain that kind of entry point getting into the Rolex watch, it, it might limit them in a certain capacity, I think, or at least kind of stack the deck against that type of collector. But I do think it's absolutely brilliant. And I also like the fact that so many more people can get into that styling of watch without necessarily having to pay the highest premium or get into a bit of a bidding war sometimes, uh, I, you know, uh, sort of with some of these watches, right? You have to pay these ultra high prices over the retail, which can be absolutely alienating, especially for new collectors. So uh, I think this is what's happening. Once again, I think it's brilliant. I, wa I wanna see how this plays out as well. Only time will tell. We don't know what's gonna go on with the economy or anything like that. But certainly I think this is a very brilliant move from Rolex and it's exciting to see just how this plays out. And also this video, by the way, was inspired by a conversation I had with our photographer, Carlos. He's great. He is so insightful. He spends a lot of his time with watches and we were kind of going back and forth on this. So maybe I'll get him on the channel. If you want to see Carlos, our photographer, come on here and talk about this. Uh, I'd love to have him on. Let me know your opinions and thoughts in the comments below. Guys, what do you think about Tudor's strategy with Rolex here? Do you think it's going to do anything in terms of the pricing? I would love to see it and hear it in the comments below. Please do not forget to check out DelrayWatch.com and my Instagram, The Real John P. Thanks guys. You've been chatting with John P.